Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another Cat Skull Academy lesson for EVE Online. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at one of the most misunderstood, in my opinion at least, armor tanking modules, the Reactive Armor Hardener. I think a lot of people think they know how this module works, and a lot of people don't use the module because they simply don't know how the module works. So the aim of this lesson is to teach you how the module works. I'm going to examine what this module does, how it operates, and explain why you might want to use this in the low slots of whatever armor tank ship you're flying. It is an armor module, so do bear that in mind before we go any further. Now, if you do enjoy this video, if you learn anything from it, please let me know. Drop a comment down below and hit like while you're down there. Liking and commenting really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. It helps YouTube promote my channel more and more. It really helps me out. So if you can take a couple of seconds just to do that, it means the world to me. And if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and keep me making content like this, you can do so by heading across to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, or my Redbubble merchandise store. Every single dollar really does help this keep this channel alive, and it means so much to me that people would pledge and donate money. It really does help. Thank you so much to everyone who is able to and does. Um, they do all have their name in the credits at the end of the video. That's one of the perks of signing up to my Patreon, and I'm about to rejig that with a load new perks as well, so make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Finally, if you are new to EVE Online, I have a referral link in the description down below that you can click. That will earn you 1 million free skill points if you've not used a referral link before. You can come join the Cat Skull Discord, that's linked in the description as well. And you can even join the Cat Skull uh, co Corporation in EVE Online as well. Words completely failed me for a moment there. Join the Cat Skull Corporation in EVE Online. Again, join our Discord if you fancy learning more about the game or trying out wormholes and stuff like that. We'd love to have you guys with us. Anyway, that all said and done then, let's talk about the Reactive Armor Hardener. The Reactive Armor Hardener is a pretty unique low slot armor tanking module in EVE Online and it definitely has some really quite powerful uses. It essentially, as the name would imply, reacts to the amount of incoming damage you're taking from different damage types and rejigs itself to counteract those and resist those damage types even better. Here we have the Reactive Armor Hardener's information page open. There are no real varieties of this, it is just one straight module, so you can just buy the one and not worry too much about it. And it says here in the description, the Reactive Armor Hardener possesses an advanced nano membrane that reacts to armor layer damage by shifting between resistances over time. This makes it able to align its defenses against whichever incoming damage types are prevalent. The module spreads 60% resistance over the four damage types, starting at 15% in each. Only one of this module type can be fitted at a time, Prototype Infernal Module. We can ignore that last little bit. Essentially, you can only have one of these fitted to your ship at a time, and as it says, it's going to react to whatever incoming damage is prevalent. Let's have a look at its attributes. This will help make things a little bit clearer, I think. So, this thing does have an activation cost. It costs capacitor to use, 42 gigajoules is the standard here, and it has a 10 second activation time. Now, what essentially happens is, when you activate the reactive armor hardener, it starts to watch the amount of damage that your armor is taking. If your armor is not taking damage because you've got no armor left or because you're still taking shields, the reactive armor hardener theoretically does nothing. You could still be cycling it, and you probably should be cycling it as you get toward the bottom of your shield tank, but it only actually starts to take effect once you are taking damage on your armor. Now, it passively applies 15% electromagnetic, 15% thermal, 15% kinetic, and 15% explosive resistances across the board to your armor. Then it looks for whatever damage type you are now taking. Essentially, when the activation starts, it records how many hits you're taking and how much electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, or explosive damage is coming in, and then reacts accordingly. Now, this means if you do have other hardeners, like for example, you know, the energized nanomembranes or things like that, even if they are multi spectrum or if they are specific, it's going to take a look at how the damage is actually hitting you after resistance. So if you look over at the right on this particular sacrilege here, you'll see I have 67% e uh, EM resistance on armor, 57 on thermal, 75% on kinetic, and 87 on explosive. Now imagine for a moment that something hits you with some kind of weapon that does all four damage types in equal amounts. What that is then going to do, 87% of the electromagnetic damage, so, or better yet, imagine you are hit with four missiles at the exact same time, all doing 100 damage. 
Now, the 87% explosive resistances means the explosive missile will be reduced down to 13 damage. The kinetic 75% resistance means that the 100 damage that you would take from the kinetic missile is reduced and you only take 25% damage for it. The 67% electromagnetic damage means that you'd be taking 33 damage from the electromagnetic missile, and then when the Inferno missile hits you, that's going to hit you for a whopping 43% thermal damage, at which point the reactive armor hardener scores that information. And if those strikes happen repeatedly, it's going to take notice of what is actually hitting you. So there it's going to say, well, I'm taking a lot of thermal damage, quite a bit of electromagnetic, but not too much of kinetic and explosive. At the end of the 10 second cycle time, as it begins its second cycle, it reacts. It's going to say, for example, in this case, it might say, well, I'm taking predominantly thermal damage. I'm not taking anything in explosive or kinetic comparatively. So we'll drop the explosive and kinetic down to 10% resistances. We'll put 7.5 additional into the thermal. So we're now at 22.5 thermal. And we're gonna put another 2.5 into the electromagnetic because we we're taking a bit there, leaving you with 17.5% electromagnetic, 22.5% thermal, and 10% on kinetic and explosive. And then as your resistances have now shifted in combat, the next few strikes that hit you during the next activation, it's going to see where you're taking damage on your armor, which damage type is providing the most incoming threat, and therefore it will adjust at the end of that cycle. And theoretically, if, for example, you had 99% electromagnetic, 99% thermal, 99% kinetic, and 0% explosive, you could find that this reduces itself down to 0% resists across the board for everything else and 60% resists for the explosive. The total amount of resistance that the armor, uh, reactive armor hardener will apply to your ship will always total up to exactly 60%. It will reduce the resistances from the areas you're not taking damage to increase the resistance to where you are taking damage. And if that that shift suddenly happens to say, you know, here we've got the thermal, so it's taking stuff out of kinetic and explosive, and it's putting it into thermal. If suddenly you're taking a few hits from thermal or kinetic, it's uh, explosive or kinetic, it's going to suddenly rejig around those. Now, the reason I mention this is because if, like me, you're a big fan of J-Space ratting, you'll know that the sleepers that you'll go up against have turrets that deal electromagnetic and thermal damage and missiles that do explosive and kinetic. This means you are always going to be taking damage from each of those two types. Across, You're going to be taking all four damage types across the board throughout a particular site. It means if you're using a ship that is small and fast enough to ignore most of the turrets and you're only getting hit by the missiles, it will actually start to react to that and it will take stuff out of the electromagnetic and thermal and move it into the explosive and kinetic. Because of how the sleepers work, that never really happens and it just looks for whichever type is actually going to be hitting you hardest. In this case, it's going to look Look at those turrets and every time those turrets even graze me it's going to react that thermal and the uh, the electromagnetic right the hell up now, if you're going up against a particular type of rat that you know deals a certain type of damage, this means the reactive armor hardener can be absolutely mad amounts of resists. Because theoretically, you could have 30% resist in electromagnetic and 30% resist in thermal with nothing in kinetic or explosive if you're going up against rats that are using energy turrets, for example, because you're not taking damage from the other two types. Meaning this can be significantly more powerful than even things like the specific specific energized membranes, like if you're having an electromagnetic energized membrane, that kind of thing. The reactor can go even higher than those. It means it's often better than a damage control, other than the fact that obviously a damage control does also help your arm, uh, your shields and your hull, but again, that's kind of up to you. It's why on this particular sacrilege fit, you'll see that I don't have a standard damage control because I'm using the assault damage control. I don't have any other resistances. I'm not using electromagnetic. Uh, or kinetic or anything like that, resistances off the board. I'm not using any of the energized membranes, for example. I am just straight up using that reactive armor hardener because I know it will ultimately give me a bigger effect to the resistances that actually matter. 
Anyway folks, that's about everything there is to say about the reactive armor hardener. It's understanding that this thing cycles and it learns whilst cycling. At the end of each cycle, it takes away from the resistances that you don't need and it gives to the resistances that you do need. This can take sometimes three to five full cycles to get into a good balance. So do be aware that in a protracted fight, this is going to be better than, the, than in a short burst fight. That is where the, uh, the energized membranes, etc do come into a bit more play. Hopefully this clarifies things for you folks. If you do have questions, drop them down below in the comment section. Hit like while you're down there. Please do remember and come join us in the Catskull Discord if you have further questions you want to ask or you've got video suggestions for me or anything like that. Otherwise, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. Nice quick one just to explain this one module for you all. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden!